back to the Trifles <laughs> podcast with me and Sips. Oh, and Perry. We're back. Almost. I was a fucking. There was a full stop between me and Sips. Full stop and period. Full stop. Oh, I didn't leave any space. I think it just fucking go for it. You've got to leave room for the applause. That's why. <laughs> you have to imagine that you're on a stage in front of a crowd of about like Seven. half a dozen people. Yeah. And um and you know when you say the names, the crowd erupts. Yeah. True. With with applause, they love it. So I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm hungover. Woo! And I'm a hungover. Oh yeah, I was still a little drunk when I woke up this morning. Oh my god, what did um, you do last night? I just went out to the Oktoberfest. pub. Oktoberfest. Well, <laughs> jeez. I went out to the pub with my mates, um, who I hadn't seen them in a while. Oh yeah. And because uh, you know they have real jobs, and none of us live near each other. We're all over. Careful, London. Lewis might get jealous. Just careful. Okay. Tread carefully. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I, I've been cutting down on the old uh, midweek drinking, right? Uh, which is something I, I would drink like pretty much every day. Have a have a couple of ciders while I was streaming just to unwind and everything. Sure. And uh, and I was like, you know what, this probably isn't healthy, so um, I've cut back on on that. So I've I've defortified my body um, towards alcohol, I guess. So I had like I think I had like five pints um, in fairly short order, and then I got the train home and I bought a burger, and I couldn't eat it on the train because I hate eating in front of other people on, in public transport. So I thought I'll have it when I get in. Yeah. So I got home and I was having having a bite of my burger. I was like, Jesus, I better go to bed. So I had like t- two bites of it, went to bed, woke up still pretty drunk when I was looking after the kids in the morning, which isn't a good thing. Um, so I'm feeling a bit delicate, but I haven't been hung over in ages and I've forgotten how fucking crappy it is. Was the burger half eaten like on your on your bed? I, ha- I had a little bit more this morning. <laughs> of course, yeah. Jesus. Up, that's yeah. the way it goes, yeah. Was it one of those burgers that they just overfill and like everything runs out of it? Where you take a bite, just like a bunch of shit falls out the back of it. Sadly and, like, not. It was a Burger the juices King. Burger. And, it was and, a Burger like, King at Waterloo and I oh, got it from right, there. Yeah. I don't even remember yeah, they, buying it, honestly. They do a pretty tight burger actually. They're like all contained, like nothing really drips yeah, out. Yeah, it's all very, very uh manufactured. Well uh, you yes, know what? Yeah. I, I was thinking about this the other day. Burger King is probably one of the most depressing burger chains that's still right, left. No, they don't feel like the king somehow, do no, they? No, I feel it's a, it's a, the honorific needs to be adjusted to just, just yeah, burger. Yeah. Burger pauper. <laughs> burger peasant. <Yeah. laughs> burger peasant. Yeah. Yeah, burger peasant. They've definitely ris- like entered this world of burger hipsters though, right? Or at least it felt like that. Like Go- five gourmet guys sort burgers of felt and stuff. much premium and gourmet yeah, burger. Yeah, burger, King, burger yeah. King did feel like it was a better quality burger than McDonald's, even though it's probably not. Back but it, in the day. it seemed like yeah. it. But now it's been surpassed. And their menu doesn't seem to have changed in a very it's been long squeezed time. Squeezed down. Yeah. yeah. And mm. also now that I mean the Burger King and Twickenham is just the most sad place. It's like there's like two people in there ever. Uh it's big and dingy and dark. There's only ever one person working on the counter because they're so quiet. Uh-huh. I just feel I feel like, you know, McDonald's at least listened to people saying the McDonald's McDonald's was like Burger King is now a few years ago and then they thought you know what let's jazz everything up and they've got like it's much brighter in there now when you go to McDonald's it's it's quite fancy looking compared to the way it used to fuck be fuck me what? Yeah. i i had a McDonald's birthday mm. when i was a kid right you know it was Wasn't a thing it special back did. then it was it so was special. really special it was yeah, so yeah back special. when they had Ronald McDonald but now where's he everyone Gone. in my class wanted to come with me to that McDonald's McDonald's birthday. Yeah, they were. I, that's when I had friends, guys. That was the last time. That's what it takes. Remember McDonald's. they had like Grimace and Grimace, the Hamburglar. Yeah, and... Hamburglar. <laughs> just there. wanted to come with me for the chicken nuggets. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I used to love uh, McDonald's chicken nuggets back in the day. Chicken with nuggets, sweet and sour sauce. Mm. They're still good, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Now it's now you can get chicken selects, which is oh, just I breaded see, chicken. Yeah. But the the nuggets are still still pretty dank. Yeah. I mean, the, again, like. It's funny how we talk so fondly of burgers and nuggets when they are kind of the epitome of, of manufactured meat. Oh, it's yeah. horrible, like, yeah. Gross you know what processed I mean? meat, yeah. It's like, uh, um, why why do we have... I mean, even the word gourmet in front of a burger feels like... A- <laughs> yeah, it does feel it ridiculous. Does, it has no effect on some people, though. Some people just do, don't give a shit. Like, I went to Hollywood with um, Terps to do this thing for Hearthstone, and we were there with Trump, you know, uh, Trump the... Yeah. Not yeah. the president, the streamer. And uh, Trump and Terps bought 50 chicken nuggets in a huge God. box. These are the best chicken nuggets. Yeah, and, they, and they ate them together. <laughs> uh, and I was Good just t- I drinking a milkshake and watching this happening. And the, both of those guys are just completely... 
they don't give a fuck about dis- they processed meat at all. They're just like, yeah, whatever. Well, give me the, the nuggets. Thing is, I'm it ready. It is fucking delicious. That's well, the yeah, that's it. it. But you know I mean? they put a lot of like different shit into them, right? Like there's sugar in there and stuff, and like you know, there's even sugar in their fries, or at least there used to be. And like it, nature it just, can't compete. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah, nature has had plenty of time to try and make a chicken delicious over the years, right? Yeah, over millions of generations, people think things have been eating chickens, and we've been breeding them to be more and more delicious. Uh, you know, domesticated. Plump. We've been and, plumping them up. Know. Yeah. We've been feeding them all sorts of stuff, oh. different things. Yeah, I know. We've fucking fed. If we could feed chickens, like, I don't know, if we could feed chickens like dog shit, okay, and it made them even more delicious, <laughs> that would be on the fucking. <laughs> Fucking shelf in in fucking wait, 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 says, oh, yeah. organically fucking. Organic There'd be dog legislation that that stated like the moment a shit leaves your dog's asshole outside, it becomes uh, property of the state as well. Exactly, <laughs> sell the dog shit to chicken that farmers. Shit up. And- You'd be able to put it in a little doggy bag, and instead of a doggy bin, you'd have a post bin, right? Where yeah. you, it, you post it to the fucking factory yeah. where they would sell luxury made dog shit ch- and people would eat the shit out of it. Yeah, well, that would be a lot better than people who leave their dog shits in the park for my kids to fall face first into oh, and, I hate and die. that so much. Uh, it's so annoying. Like, uh, fucking... I get that people like dogs and they want to have dogs and stuff, but holy shit, if it takes shit outside, just clean it up. Like, do the trick where you put your hand in the bag inside out and then, you know, I mean, cl- I know, I know some people use the, like, use the bare hand. Like, I get it. Like, that's gross. Use the little scoopy thing. Or yeah. a piece of go card. blind if you touch dog shit. It's what? That's not even That's not even an urban myth. What, go, going blind? From touching dog shit. It's yeah, dangerous, yeah. It's, it's bad it's, for it, your eyes. Cat shit is bad, too. Cats are... I think cats are the worst because people let their cats outside and their cats just roam around everywhere shitting... Yeah. They shit all over my lawn. Like, every fucking day there's cat shit on my, yeah, in my terrible. backyard. That's like, terrible. I think you can get toxoplasmosis... That was in Train Spotting. The guy got toxoplasmosis from all the cat shit yeah. lying around. Well, We're th- not meant to to live next to poop. It's a bad no, no. thing. And that's the thing. These animals, like, well, I don't even know. Like, dude, did dogs live in the wild, like, before we started breeding them and stuff? Like, what, what were dogs before they became ultra domesticated and, and bred for domestication? They were just wolves? Yeah. Like, how- well, what about like Jack Russell no, no, Terriers? They, like, they were, so that's those just are, inbreeding. They're, they're, years and years. They're man-made, selec- right? They're well, like, they're selectively bred. There were no wild yeah, yeah. Jack Russells. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's crazy, right? That they the same thing. Oh my with, God, um, look at that in the forest over there! A pack of wild Jack Russells. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with um, with <laughs> guinea pigs. You know, you know, little guinea pigs that you buy from the store. Apparently, their gene pool is is super super weak now because of all the breeding and stuff that they've done. And a lot of them um, seem healthy at first, but their lifespan is like super reduced to like three, four years where they should live about seven or eight years because they just come with all of these genetic problems because of all the inbreeding and stuff like that. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Like, yeah, it is. They're really cute. They're small and cute and they're great little pets and it's stuff too. It's a shit too. pet. They do nothing. Oh, come on. It's If you're going to get a pet, they're the easiest. You don't really have to do anything. They don't even really want to yeah, see Yeah, but you. they don't do anything either. Exactly. They just live in a box. I feel bad because they just live in a box. They should be running wild in Peru or wherever they're from. Oh, no. Peru. They're preyed upon by pretty much every other ah, animal. Animals so they're are used safer to that. in a box. They're used to that. Animals are used to that. They're, they're, they've evolved to deal with the fact that they're just going to get eaten a lot of the time. Well, this is sure. the thing I was talking about to people. Like, I think that for people who have, like, pets, these things is... The thing is that these guinea pigs now have been so... And birds, too, like domestic, like pet birds, yeah. have been so domesticated over hundreds... Well, in, in some cases, thousands of years. I mean, like... Yeah, but that's it. It's, been, tamed, it's um, been going on for a long-ass time, Domesticated it? cats, didn't they? Yeah, and, the Egyptians and, and I think cats, it was, yeah. I think it was obviously, like, South Americans who domesticated guinea pigs. And like, I think it was fucking, like, hun- thousands of years ago that it happened. Hundreds of that- thousands. I doubt yeah. it. Not, not that. Not no one had pets. pets. They had the choice days. back then of whether or not they were going to domesticate a dinosaur or guinea pig. <laughs> and then they just <laughs> sort of like weighed it up and they thought, eh, this T-Rex isn't going to fit in my backyard. <laughs> Maybe I'll just go for the guinea pig, you know. It's, <laughs> it's easier. It's easier. And that they just, like, they just... They're just not good to to survive. They can't survive on their own. They, not anymore. really, no. You know, so like if it was a zombie t- apocalypse, they'd all die they out would. with us. You, you know? know what I, I read the other day? That grass was not around when the dinosaurs were around. I, I assume right. that's what dinosaurs yeah. ate, but they didn't. They no, ate grass is, grass is like a, a thing that became very popular in the 
50s, I think it was, when they started making uh, big suburbs in America. They the built demand the grass. for grass, um, like, really? shot up. And it's a, it's a European thing. I think they, they actually started growing uh, grass from specific grains to make, like, you know, like lawn grass or whatever. Uh, but then it became, like, this, this thing in America where everybody had to have, like, manicured properties and stuff like that. So that it, was, mm. it was very sought after. And that's why there's so much grass now. It was, uh, it was the, it was the voice of the people. It was the demand. People wanted to have nice Is grass good? wisteria lane like houses. You know, they wanted to have these these big suburban houses with nice lawns that the guy could mow the grass on the weekend after a hard week of working at the stapler factory hmm. back in the 1950s. Middle and America. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, uh, it, it all came from that. And then that sort of just became the... Hey, Joe! Yeah, oh, it, it hi, became Mark. the sort How of status you? quo. It oh, became I'm like the good. norm. How's the stapler factory going? Yeah. Oh, well, Pam stapled her face to uh, <laughs> the, the staple machine last week. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh yeah, yeah. She's got st- just st- just just her eyelids are just stapled <laughs> shut now. It's just a disaster. Poor, poor oh, Pam. No. Poor Pam. Poor Pam. God damn. Well, see ya. Oh bye. How's she gonna? <laughs> this is the fifties, right? How the hell is she gonna do the dishes now? She won't be able to see all the stuff on the. That's on, right. On exactly. the dishes. Pam. Actually, she wouldn't work at the staple. Oh yeah, she if she's would. working at the staple factory. Maybe things were different. I don't know. Ooh. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, that's where uh, that's the story of grass. Is grass good that's my question is it good for the world grass is it yeah well yeah is it like does it stop kind of the the, the dust bowl do you know what i mean does it like does growing grass on this land stop it becoming kind of just turned here's, into... so here's things that grass does okay yeah looks nice yeah it provides food for a shitload of animals yeah right um it, it binds soil together, like you were saying, to prevent it just blowing yeah. away. Because the top layer of soil would yeah. just blow away. Yeah. You get to play football on it. Provides a nice place for wild dogs and cats to is shit it on. good for greenhouse greenhouse effect as well? Does it like... Well, it's a plant. It's a good reflector. No, it's... um. What do you mean greenhouse effect? He means well, is it, it, does it absorb carbon, I guess? Um, well, no, I mean like, does it work like as a... Does it work as a reflector? Because a lot of stuff isn't really very reflective like modern urbanization is sort of a heat sink it makes the earth hotter i think clouds Whereas... are the main source of reflection honestly yeah it's yeah. all the gas in the air that's the reflective stuff like the it's all it's it's basically like the greenhouse gases are, are what are reflecting all the all the shit down onto the earth where it wouldn't normally sort of no thing. the and greenhouse gases keep the heat in this is the problem no it's, they're it's, like, it's like uh, a blanket it's like a They're big like, blanky. Yeah, you know, I think that's the that I think that's the misconception. I think that people, it, it, because it's called the greenhouse effect, everybody assumes that um, it keeps the heat in. But I think the gases in the atmosphere that are there in abundance now, which they never used to be, from burning like fossil fuels and stuff like that, um, they they help reflect. Uh, the energy of the sun down onto the earth how would more they do so that? sort of thing that doesn't make sense i don't know sense. man i'm not a scientist but yeah, that's but how I don't it works think you're right I well think, look I it think up you're wrong i will look i just look okay, it up right now i'm right i'm telling you effect research research confirms that the trapping laws... of the sun's warmth in a planet's lower atmosphere due to the greater transparency of the atmosphere to visible radiation from the sun than to infrared radiation emitted from the planet's surface. Oh, God, here, hang on a second. Let me find this thing. I was reading about this recently. This is why, this is why, okay, the greenhouse effect, okay? Are you, are you ready for this? The greenhouse effect. Solar, wait, 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 I'm reading it. Solar radiation passes through the atmosphere. That's incoming solar radiation from the sun. Yeah. But half the solar radiation is absorbed by the Earth's so- surface. Then it bounces back. Radiation is converted to heat energy, causing the emission of long wave infrared radiation back to the atmosphere. Some of the infrared radiation is absorbed and re-emitted by the greenhouse gas molecules. That's what you're referring to, I think. Some of the solar radiation is reflected by the atmosphere and the Earth's surface. Some of the infrared radiation passes through the atmosphere and out into space. If a planet's atmosphere contains radiatively active gases, i.e. greenhouse gases, they will radiate energy in all directions. Part of this radiation is directed towards the surface, warming it. The intensity of the downward radiation, that is the strength of the greenhouse effect, will depend on the atmosphere's temperature and on the amount of greenhouse gases that the atmosphere contains. 
Earth's natural greenhouse effect is critical to supporting life. Human activities, mainly the burning of fossil fuels and clearing of forests, have strengthened the greenhouse effect and caused global warming. The term greenhouse effect arose from a faulty analogy with the effect of sunlight passing through glass and warming a greenhouse. The way a greenhouse retains heat is fundamentally different as a greenhouse works mostly by reducing airflow so that the warm air is kept inside. Oh. So why'd they hey. give it a shit name? Because fucking so people are stupid, that's why. <laughs> it sounds better, right? And it's it's yeah. easier for people that don't know what it is to understand, right? That, like, they called know, it global Everybody warming. knows that a greenhouse is warm. But they, they shouldn't call it global warming either, because the problem is it's them people say, but it's cold! Like, climate change <laughs> is a better name, right? Here's a question. Are greenhouses good for the green greenhouse effect? Are greenhouses good for the greenhouse effect? I don't think trapping warm air inside a very small building in your backyard uh, to help you grow tomatoes is part of the problem, really. Right. I don't think it has any Do you know one, one of the solutions I'm not an came expert, with, though. <laughs> well, neither am I, because I was dead wrong. Well, let's look it up and talk and read out what, One of the solutions they had, I remember reading this a while back, some scientists, I, I always imagine when they have these meetings in the government, they're like, all right, uh, Mr. President, we have our top scientific advisor here, Mr. Nordstrom. Mr. Nordstrom, would you please share your findings? <laughs> yeah, I have a, an idea, Mr. President. We must build a giant mirror and put it in space to reflect some of the sunlight away from the Earth. It would cost uh. nearly $10 billion and 50 years to build this giant mirror. But they were thinking of doing it, building a big fucking metal disc that unfurls in space to reflect some of the sunlight from the Earth back. And uh, for sunlight, back. because apparently if we could have just stopped like two or three percent of the sunlight hitting the Earth, it would counteract a lot of the um, the warming effect. Yeah. But I think I think the reason they didn't want to do it is because people would stick a big mirror in space and go, problem solved, and just fucking leave it there. Even though there's more problems than just the sun. Like the problem is we shouldn't be pumping all this shit into the atmosphere and polluting and everything like that. Like, let's solve that problem rather than build a giant fucking mirror and pretend we've solved it. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, I mean, there's there's a lot of like very smart people all over this now and have been for years and stuff. And like, I think they've made recommendations that have pr pretty much been ignored. Um, there's certain things that they, that they changed over the years, like the, like it was, a, what is it? Was it CFCs? The, um, yeah, oh, yeah. they banned those. Uh, yeah. And then they, and then instead that they used HFCs, which they've now banned as well because of the effect on like ozone, which is like, uh, you know, the, the holes in the ozone layer and, and stuff like that. So they, yeah. they've, they've made some steps, but like, you know, still the fact that we're just like belching out tons of fucking carbon like you know by refining oil and Do you know what driving cars and container shit still... ships container ships are a big problem too if you look at the top 20 like the 20 biggest container ships in the world are so fucking big and use such horrible fuel that those 20 ships alone produce as much pollution or more than all the cars in the world chuck out so That's these things crazy. are just running all the fucking time yeah huge things think how big their engines are and the fuel they use is like, they don't just stick diesel in there or something. They're sticking like God knows what in there. And we've just got all this shit that we're just thinking, you know what? It's fine. This won't harm anything, but it's stupid. I think one of, one of the problems with grass as well, and I think, I think mostly it's pretty good, but I think one of the things that people are concerned about with grass is that the amount of fresh water that grass tends to consume from people like watering their lawns and stuff you know especially if it's dry or whatever it's like it's like a lot of fresh water used for something oh that they do that in hollywood a lot don't they that's a big thing just in, looks uh, in looks nice <laughs> you know what i mean like it's it doesn't really serve any other purpose other than to like look pretty good and you know your kids can play on your it sheep or whatever. can eat your I mean, sheep can yeah. yeah your sheep can eat the the grass and I mean stuff. there's but been yeah, a, the, it, the thing is there's been a big move for people sticking astroturf down in their gardens right so i see a lot of people do that now cuz well, you know grass the, is the, pretty pretty good looking the thing with Gosh, the astroturf yeah. is that um it uses um it uses rubber like it uses it, it usually recycled rubber from like old tires and shit like right, that right right which is fine the problem is is that when astroturf um retains a ton of heat Right. So oh, if it's yeah. a super hot day and the sun is, is beating down on it, the rubber like melts slightly and can be toxic. Like oh, people man. people have died from it. <laughs> like not a lot, but what eating it's, it it's, or just being near it? Or just being their near it. Like it. the the like the emissions given Funny, off. I'm by gonna it. rub my face on the yeah. uh, grass and breathe a lot. 
So I uh, mean, it's not I'm like it's not. We're not talking about like you know it wiping out the population of a small town right, or whatever. Right. But there have definitely been cases that have been linked back to it, um, and you know it's. It gets super fucking hot, yeah. like, like like hot, like so hot that you couldn't step on it with your bare feet, sort of thing. Whereas grass, even if it's hot, you can step on it with your bare feet and stuff like that. So, but it's low maintenance, right? You just well, this is apparently why it's better for climate change than like actual grass because you don't have to constantly be using your lawnmower to mow it and watering it, and yeah, fiddling with it all the time and getting it perfect. Yeah, you it's know, just, all of that extra. It's work. just poisonous, but yeah, no, it's, it's a balancing act, right? <laughs> It's one evil or another. They're all... We're going to fuck the world regardless. Yeah, we so are, yeah. might as well enjoy that burger. We might as well, yeah. Enjoy nuggets. that burger while you're sitting on your AstroTurf and, you know, fucking driving your car around your AstroTurf and stuff. Oh, God. I did, I did look at a couple of... When I was looking around at moving um, recently, I sat, found a couple of places and one of them had this AstroTurf garden. And it looked like the cheapest, tackiest shit you've ever seen in your life. So you bought the place. So I li- I'm recording out of my, <laughs> oh, my garden right now. I'm actually outside right now, sitting I'm on my AstroTurf. <laughs> it's got this funny smell, though. It's quite a hot day. <laughs> yeah, the fumes are just... I feel very dizzy, going to my but... head. So oh, I feel so good. <laughs> it might be low oh. blood sugar, though. It just might be low blood sugar. So I, I watched a movie. I watched a movie. It was on Turner Classic Movies channel, which I like, right. TTM. I watch it quite a lot. Right. And it was called Executive Decision with Kurt Russell. Oh, yeah. Right? It Kurt was, Russell, yeah. yeah. So this film had quite a quite a decent cast. It had Kurt Russell. Uh-huh. It had Steven Seagal, who I can't stand, but he was in it. Yeah. Halle Berry was in it. It had John Leguizamo in it. Had mm-hmm. Oliver Platt in it, and it had the guy who was in charge of um, what was the name of it? Was it Dinan in- Industries in Terminator Two, where the 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 black guy that they have to go and tell him you've got to destroy this chip or you're going to create the Skynet? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and he in the end he he gets shot and he drops the thing that blows up the the building, right? Spoilers, but anyway, yeah. Him, he was in it, and a couple of other people I recognize were in it. And uh, this movie is the plane gets taken over. Oh, David Suchet, like fucking Poirot, was in it. He was the bad guy, right? Nice. Um, so he's he's in it. And uh, I was watching this movie. And basically, these terrorists take over a plane led by Suchet. And um, they've got a bomb on board. So the lads decide they're going to sneak up to the plane on a stealth bomber with a tube that goes between the stealth bomber and the plane and sneak in through this hatch underneath. And this is quite near the start of the film. The hatch goes, thump, sticks onto the plane. They've equalized the pressure, and they're climbing up this ladder to get into the plane. One of them falls and knocks himself out. So they're trying to struggle to get him out before the, the seal breaks. And just as it's about to break, they're like, Steven Seagal has climbed the ladder. And they say, Steven Seagal, you're not going to make it. And he goes, you will. And he closes the hatch, sealing his own doom. And the tunnel gets blown off the, the ship, and he flies off into the atmosphere and dies. And the plane spins out of control and the pilot jetsons out. So now they're stuck on the plane and they have to figure out where the bomb is, defuse it, and then kill the terrorists and take the plane back over before it enters US airspace and gets shot down by the US Air Forces, the F-17s or 16s or whatever they're flying. Where does the executive decision come in? Like, when is that one made? I'll tell you. First of all, the president is not in the movie at all. Like, he's obviously... I don't know how they couldn't just get an actor to play the president. It's like the president was out of the country. They could have even done, like, a Steinbrenner sort of thing. Yeah, they could have. You see the back of him and he's like, I'm making an executive decision. (laughs) Exactly. But they didn't. So at one point... They decide they're going to shoot the plane down because they've run out of time. It's going to enter U.S. airspace. It's got this nerve agent bomb. It's going to blow up. Big problem. But there's a guy on the plane. They, they think they defused the bomb, but then they realize that there's a trigger man on the plane. Right. So even if they defuse the, the trigger mechanism and the timer, this guy can just go boop and push a button and blow the bomb up. Okay, so they realize they have to find the trigger man who's like a hidden passenger, kill him, and then they can kill the rest of the terrorists and defuse the bomb. So two things intrigued me, all right? First of all, to come back to the executive decision, why it's called that, at one point in the movie, a guy says, you better get the president on the phone. If we're going to shoot this plane down, this is an executive decision. In other words, only the president can say, yes, shoot those civilians to save more civilians. That's the decision okay, that he has to make. So he's got to decide, is it better that we kill the 400 passengers on this plane to stop the bomb, or do we just let it blow up over Washington and kill a million people? So that was the executive decision. So first of all... Um, 
at one point Kurt Russell's like, I think I've spotted the um the lad, like the trigger man. So <laughs> so they, they've got all these cameras. In his own words. Yeah. <laughs> they've got these little cameras that they've poked through into the uh you know, because they're sort of above the, the, the main compartment in this hidden crawl space. And they drill, literally with a hand drill, like, drill a hole. Nobody notices that none of the dust falling from the ceiling attracts anybody's attention. Drill holes through the plane's ceiling so they can peek in with these tiny cameras like the SAS do, have a look and see if they can spot the lad. So they spot him, and Kurt Russell, they're they're all ready to go. They're like, okay, because these commanders are like, all right, what we'll do is blow the doors, we'll kill the lights, we'll go in there and hit them hard, we'll kill all these guys, bingo, bango, no problem. So they're all on board with that plan. They're ready to do it. And suddenly Kurt Russell just decides he's going to fucking go in because he thinks he spotted the trigger man. Doesn't tell anyone his plan. Doesn't relay this over the radio. Just hides. He literally hides behind Halle Berry in the most stupid way. He's like crouched behind her and getting her to walk forward. Like there's no (laughs) way you would miss him. He's walking through the passenger area. There's all terrorists knocking about. He's there with his gun just hiding behind Halle Berry. Goes to shoot the guy, and it's just some guy smuggling diamonds for some reason. He he, he thinks it was the, the trigger device, but it was just a load of diamonds in a box. He's like, oh shit, it's the wrong guy. Suddenly spots the real guy. All hell breaks loose. And the, the, the other commanders are like, what the fuck? He's just gone in there. So I'm wondering if the executive decisions that Kurt Russell decided, all this planning, like an hour and a half of build-up, build-up, he just goes, fuck it, I'm YOLOing in, and just fucking goes in. Yeah. I was like, where's the sense in this? Kurt Russell isn't, and he's never shot anyone in his life. He's just a, a, a fucking... Uh, analyst of some kind. Why is yeah. he rocking in there? What's up with that? I was high confused. risk, high reward. It was I, stupid. He, he pulled it off. It was though. no. He did. He barely did. He barely did. Yeah, but he still did. He, That's well, the it main was thing. Stupid. There was a happy. They should have let, let the commandos handle. I just couldn't believe that the film was quite sensible up to that point. And then Kurt Russell just goes, "Fuck it," and just goes in. I was like, Man. "What?" Well, Man. sometimes that is the decision that you make, right? Sometimes I could see that in my own life. You know, sometimes you've been <laughs> over and over something so many fucking times. Sometimes you're like. Fuck it! I can't talk about this anymore. Let's just do it. Or yeah, yeah. You know, it's like who cares? Yeah, but Let's there's not 400 lives at stake, and potentially, you know, the, there's a nerve agent that's going to detonate. I mean, yeah. Uh, you're you're mm. talking about things like having a burger or having some grass in your garden or switching to astroturf. Those are fuck it. Decisions. It's like it's like you're in a restaurant. Yeah, you got a menu. You're like fucking. You know, fuck it. Just I'll have what? I'll have the burger. Who cares? Like fuck, I don't care. Just hungry. Just yeah. give me some fucking Is that an executive right decision? So, so, so first it's of all, it's a mini executive decision because you're the, president, the executive right? of your life, right? So True. you you say, you know Sometimes. what? Fuck it. I've I've had enough. You know, I'm having a bad day. I think I think eating this burger is going to make me feel a bit better. I'm making the executive decision for myself to buy a Burger King <laughs> Burger King burger. <laughs> I'll have to get the president on this one, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Mr. President. Nuggets yeah, or Burger King. That's what's great about being like even a, a young adult. You know, when you get to that point, like with a, remember the first time you had a bit of money and your parents dropped you off at the movie theater oh, to man. meet your friends. Exciting. And you're just like, fuck, holy shit. Like I've got all this money and I can buy whatever I want with yeah. it. Yeah. So, and then you buy like 10 chocolate bars <laughs> and watch a movie. That It's a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah. It's like that, that, that first little... It's that first little sniff of freedom from from being oppressed by the man. You know, and it's like the thing you're... is, people always think that oppression and, and freedom and everything can be achieved politically. But I think, honestly, the biggest freedom you can give people is that they have some fucking money. Like, that's yeah, what actually that's gives people bit. the most freedom to make their own decisions and stuff like that. They need some money. A little bit of money, yeah. They don't need billions. No. They just need enough money that they are actually... That, that people just, give a shit about them. just to do a, cu- a couple of fun things, you know, just just enough mix money it up a that bit. they like the, the, the decision is there. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, rather like, than have like, everything, they, like, rather than like, oh, I have to do yeah. this. Now you've got a choice. Now you're a consumer, and the, and the man will actually give a shit about you. That's the that's the the shame of it is when people don't have money, no one gives a shit. Yeah, because they that's know true. that you're useless. Yeah, like, what are you going to do? In terms of bro? making profits and. Stuff like you that. You generate yeah. nothing. You consume yeah. a little. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. That's why having money, giving giving people uh, enough money to become empowered is so important, I think. What yeah. you're saying is that money buys happiness. I did not say that, Lewis. <laughs> in the in the words of Jacob in the, Bronowski. In the context of our society and stuff, it doesn't buy happiness, but it gives you options. In the in the words of Jacob Bronowski, a great man. If you haven't seen The Ascent of Man, T V series from BBC from like I think the seventies. It's brilliant, and you should watch it. Yeah, it's fantastic. And he, he talks about all the different things that happened in history that really helped mankind uh, become sort of what it is now, you know? Uh, bear in mind in the 70s and 80s, I guess everything was looking pretty rosy for the future. We were thinking, you know, everything's going to be awesome. Uh, obviously, it isn't. But 
the thing is he said the good life is not found in material decency but the good life must be based on material decency so he's saying that once you give poor people the chance to lead a decent life materially other good things will follow from that like you can't just give people shit and that makes them happy but that's where the good life begins because then you don't have to worry about shit and mass production of things like even simple stuff like cutlery and plates and clothes and thing and furniture has enabled people to have a decent life materially and then happiness can come from that if you if you continue to build it i thought that was really deep i like that a lot so when people say money doesn't buy you happiness it's true but it also but it allows happiness to exist i think whereas the lack of any material decency makes everything so shitty that it doesn't really I matter mean, what i think you it do. definitely improves the quality of life like uh, in terms of like standards you know like like stuff you said like cutlery and and you know like advances in hygiene and stuff like that means that you're not fucking sick all the goddamn time I mean, we're still a little bit sick, but we're not we're not like you dying in our 30s right, uh, right. for the most part and stuff now, you know, like uh, like all of these things are are, are very good and, and, like, and have probably generated a quite a bit of happiness. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah. like people's living standards generally in the West, at least uh, have to contribute some happiness back to them a little bit. Right. Like like I, w- I would be miserable if I lived in a log cabin with no running water or electricity. For instance. Some people seek that shit out. Like that's some their, people do their yeah and and more power to them if that's what they want to do and that, that makes them happy personally i would not be happy no i internet. could i could tolerate it i don't think i would be like a useless mess like i would get on with it but if i'd if i'd if i'd had the luxury of running water and electricity in the past i would be like fuck this shit like i just want to get back yeah. to running water and electricity like this is not how I want to live the rest of my life. But I, I, I do understand ha- how some people are attracted to that and they want to do it. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just like, give people enough money to buy a burger. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, well, you know, you know what, though? Like, I think... Doesn't have to be a dog shit Give, give a man a burger and he'll yeah, eat I think for if just it, a day. Give, I, I give him the social... means to go to Burger King all the time and he will be a happy man. I think social <laughs> systems do kind of give people the money for a burger. But the problem is, is that the bar is set so high, right? Like, it's not the burger... <laughs> it's good. That makes people think that they're going to be happy. It's like the burger it, is it's, the it's all of the shit, right? Like yeah, they need the fries tablets. and they need the coke as well. You got to have the big TV and you got to have this and that and everything else and the car and like all this really expensive stuff. And that's what. And then I think that just ends up making people feel miserable as well, right? There's like there's definitely it's sort of like a standard that people have in mind. What, of the things that they need to have or the things that they feel yeah. that they, they and need. And it seems to like, it keeps going, it keeps going. The, the, the bar for where the good life begins seems to keep yeah. moving. Like it, rather yeah. than just, right, we got there, we, we're in a good place, infant mortality rates are super, like historically compared to humanity's 100,000, 200,000 years or whatever of, I mean, apparently I'm reading a book called Sapiens at the moment, which I really recommend. It's very good. Oh, yeah, it's really good. Um, I mean, honestly, this this fucking show is full of great recommendations. I mean, honestly, like, I'm going to... It is. I'm going to, like... I, I watched the Vietnam War thing. Oh, yeah, that, that was yes. good. Did you like that? How, yeah, did you watch really, the whole really thing? Good. Fuck, yeah, it's like 20 it hours. I mean, that's all I've done over the last week, honestly, is all I do every oh. week is write down while I'm listening to this podcast, the stuff, and then over the next week I'm going to watch The Ascent of Man again. Oh, I'm going to so probably good. watch because... The same team who made The Ascent of Man also made Cosmos, which was the Carl Sagan mm-hmm. famous series in the 80s. And they also made one before called Civilization, which was um, this guy called Kenneth Clark went around and it was very British, but he basically talked about fucking civilization, like history and like all these. these it, was, it was very famous and very good. And even now, like stands up as watchable, even though it was made like fucking 15 years before it was made. It was like made in like fucking 1970 or like 1969. Ridiculous. A long time ago. But that's, you know, that's history, when I was born in the 70s. The Byzantiums is as far away now as it was in the 70s. You know, it, nothing's really changed from the, the, the sort of the idea of like creating content around. Like we don't know. A, well, sure, we know a little bit more, but maybe we're a little bit better on the on the details. And it, but it's coming, coming at it from a different angle. But it's still like really interesting to see like just a different viewpoint. You know, the 70s, the, they, the people around there did have a different outlook on life. They did have a different viewpoint, you know. There was Kennedy and the space race and, you know, white picket fences and people go to work in the stapler factories. It was different. It was a different time, you know. They didn't have Burger Kings. And maybe they did. Actually. I think no, they, they did. did. Yeah, I'm pretty off. sure that they had. Uh, but it was a very different outlook towards Burger Kings. Their burgers you know? weren't they even were... royal at that point. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't even think they were the king at that point. I yeah. think it was just Burger. Burger, Burger Duke. The yeah. Burger Earl. <laughs> <laughs> the Viscount of Burgers. That's it. What is with the? What's with this craze for like artisan food now? Right? Like people you can't have, just have a burger. They, they, people just have more money than they used to. Well, right? I, so I don't know if they, have... if they necessarily have more money. I just think people eat out a fuckload mm. compared to what they used to. Like I think people eat at, at home. A lot of people like. Um, I know that there was a. I watched a, a documentary about eating habits. And one of the best tests for people's eating habits is how long do you spend cleaning up after dinner? And in somewhere like um, America, they have incredibly low amount of time spent cleaning up after dinner because it involves putting packaging in the in the rubbish. That's it. Like that's cleaning up. There's not washing up or loading the dishwasher or anything like that. It's just getting all the containers together and binning them. So they spend very little time cooking because they just order. Like if I know a lot of American people who just order food. They never cook. Yeah. They some they either go out to eat. They get food delivered. That's it. Like there's very little cooking. I very rarely cook now. So yeah, it's, I mean it's it's a it's a very modern idea that you don't cook at home. That you apparently we have way less time, even though I think. I know that in the 50s, when the computer was first becoming a thing, they thought that we'd all be working three-day weeks because everything's so efficient, we just don't need to go into work as much. Obviously, yeah. that's not the way it worked, which is a shame. No. But yeah. rather than spend more time relaxing at home, cooking dinner with your family, people think that we've got to eat fast, I've got to eat now, and you know, I, I, I go, 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 and everything's accelerated. Even though we have faster communications, faster computers, faster everything, we're apparently running out of time. Because I think the system and the man yeah. has filled that spare time with work and the, the need for, for money. Uh, and, oh, and, but know. man, having said all that, porn has never been better. Like, it's... Well, I no, don't know, no, man. But the thing is, I got a problem all of this porn. stuff, though, like, but back in the day, you did not have... There's such a like, vast like, amount of it, too. Like, 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 this is the thing. Like, I read this thing about, like, the, the, the passing of boredom, right? Like, how back when we were kids, we were bored. Like, there was nothing to do. And I, I get that feeling sometimes, but... Really, sometimes I'm just spoiled for choice. Yeah. Right? I've got like I've got a Steam library full of games I've never played. I've got Netflix full of things I want to watch. I've got tons of series. I've got folders and folders of books. I've got audio books. I've got fucking books on my shelf Think that I haven't read. Think of all the podcasts I've just there. sat there. Like some something some incredibly crazy statistic. Like like seventy five percent of games on Steam people have bought and then never even even loaded once. You know. Yeah. And then another twenty five percent they've loaded up for five minutes and stopped again. It's like. Like it's crazy, like the 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 amount. Well, of, like, a lot of this stuff you can pick up for really cheap in sales and stuff, though. You know, I like think that 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 does skew it definitely. Like yeah. people think, oh, I might want to play this one day because it's a bargain. They oh, pick yeah. it up and then they never do it, and it's like, you know, how how it wasn't like that, you know, back in the day. I am over. I I mean, like I've been doing this channel with Turts where I'm trying to play a new game every day, right? To yeah. try he's and pitching that. Look, he's, he's pimping his yeah, other yeah. channel on our. How, so how's that, that going? Are you? Um, Terrible. Have you gotten to the point it's now? Really have you gotten to like the, the the fat middle layer where you're just there's a ton of very samey, not very polished, um, not very well designed games that you're <laughs> absolutely not. So many new games come out all the fucking time. A lot of like this cack. week. Absolute I've got like cack. Forza Horizon. I've got like fucking Call of Duty Blackout. I played the Black Ops. I played Blackout yesterday. I tried that. I've played like fucking just uh, people are sending me stuff all the time. There's too much stuff. And a lot of it, I'm like, oh, man, I'd quite like to spend a few hours in this. And I can't because, you know, I'm just there's so much else I really want to do. And I guess it, it gives you the opportunity to pick and choose, though. Right. And I, I, I do enjoy my free time. And I, you know, I watch through that Vietnam thing. But, you know, it's like it's it, it's it's different to how it was when we were kids. Right. It's it's. You, you know, even with like porn and everything. Remember, you know, remember renting movies. Remember you exactly. Could, and it was and actually movies, like, like a, a lot of work to go and get a movie out. I mean, did you watch? Actually, by the way, did you watch this fucking executive decision on the TV? I did. I watched like, it on TCM. It sounds like a fucking TV movie. I was tired, so I went and sat in front of the TV. I flicked did you, around. Did you? Did you join like halfway in, or did you join? Like I joined in? A, a half an hour in. And I watched yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and you feel like you hadn't missed anything. No, it's, yeah. it's a shit movie. Because I mean, that's what know. movies used to be like. And TV shows still are, are a little bit like that. Like, um, I was watching, like, I just turned on the TV and, like, Burn Notice was on, like, this American show. And you can fucking join that show, like, any right. at any point in it and 
just be 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 to be dragged along. It feels like the kind of TV show that's designed for for motels in America, right, right. where you go into the motel, <laughs> you turn the TV on, you turn the shower on, you unpack, and it's just there in the background as this noise. And it's just such a thinly kind of nothing story that is so predictable and obvious, but it's just just background noise telly, like like like. Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm sorry, I've like dinner date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's on in my house like all the goddamn time it's either that or kids tv it's it's kids tv or if we don't know what to watch dinner date oh fuck yeah dinner, date. dinner date's like three like 30 like three th- there's like a channel that only has dinner date on it too which is fantastic you just you know if there's nothing on you just like oh well I'll just watch dinner date i, mean, like, those I episodes know it's gonna like, be on it, it's it's half an hour or whatever but it might as well be divided into three 10 minute it might be ten, might as well be ten minute episodes, you know, yeah. like YouTube episodes where you can just run this fucking playlist and it's just the same shit every time except different faces. I think that's sometimes. I think that's what we do, mm. right? Same shit but different. Yeah, you know? and it's like it's it's comforting. It's like familiar, but also you know what you're gonna get. And also, like I don't know, it's I, we like it, humans. We like to to go through life having the same thing but slightly different. It's weird. So, boys, I mean, it's uh, Apprentice season is back on upon oh, us, God. and I've been watching fucking it. Hell. Last night was, uh, well, as usual, just a fucking train wreck. A uh, bunch of uh, grown-ass men and women uh, who are probably successful in their own right or whatever, but when it comes to doing uh, challenges set out by uh, Alan Sugar, they just seem to, like... That's Lord fucking, Sugar to you. Completely. I, I, I refer to him as Alan. <laughs> I, we're on like first name basis now. I watch yeah, that show all the goddamn fellow time. Fellow businessman. Um, so yesterday's challenge was uh, they they all met up at uh, an old um, flour mill, one of the biggest ones in the world. I've uh, laid in, on this flour in, mill for you. Now what in, I want from London. you is <laughs> yeah. I want you to grind the grain and the wheat and make some bloody bread. No, no. Well, so, I've laid so... on this bread for you. And now I want you to toast it and make me a bloody sandwich. <laughs> so the um, so the baking industry in the UK is worth three point six billion uh, per the year. The baking industry in the yeah, UK that's right. is worth three point eight so, so billion Sugar, of dollars of pounds. I want them. Lord Sugar wants all of his his dudes to go out and make artisan donuts. Okay, because there's a lot of room for innovation in that in that sector in the donut sector. The okay? future there's is round of... with a hole in the middle. <laughs> Get That's going, right. you mugs. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> so they uh, so they set out uh, to to design their own donuts, uh, and then they had to wake up at two thirty in the morning to go to a bakery and learn how to make donuts. They had to like secure orders, and then in the end, they had to they had to bake like what fucking six hundred donuts or something to fulfill these orders. And it was just a shit show, like as worse. usual. It was just a fucking shit show. Everyone on like, that show is a is a fucking idiot. It's crazy. They're, they're, they're so stupid. Oh god, they're and, so and egotistical think... and backstabby, and they make terrible decisions time and again. Like I, I have no experience of business, like other than working for no. them and and being a customer. But there's like... definitely stereotypes around it, and these people seem to conform to every single yeah. one of them. Like they're just emulating successful people in the worst way, right? Like they. You know they 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 they, they talk the talk in a lot of ways. But do but they like, walk the walk? They Sips, don't walk the they walk. They do not walk the walk. <laughs> They're if not thou dost that walk. talk the talk, thou must <laughs> yes, walk us the exactly. walk. Exactly. Oh, it's crazy. I'm not. You know what? It's one of those things. Like it, it's the perfect sort of like like armchair general show, though, isn't it? Yeah. It, where you can sit you know, there and go, you, ah, "These people are so." Yeah, stupid. you think you know better, but if it was you in the situation, you would probably make a lot of fucking mistakes. Also, too, right? every but, all the good shit you do is probably going to get edited out. Every small well, yeah. conversation, yeah, yeah, the one yeah, where you yeah. look like a mug. Yeah, because the yeah. format of the show is yeah. definitely like, like like certainly in the first couple of weeks, it's it's a lot like any other show where there's a lot of chaff that needs to be filtered out. Indeed. So there's a lot of people like making like huge mistakes and oh, but this this season has been awkward. There's just some really awkward people, and there's just been moments where I've had to close my eyes and like clench really hard, like <laughs> it just really hard to watch. Well, like, that's why I stopped watching these kind of shows. Is the, oh the god, trend. but. But it, it's it's still I, I still like watching it for some reason. It's like almost like a guilty pleasure or yeah. something. Like it's Is that like is that okay, do you reckon they do 
I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, we talk about... When we do these sort of live action sort of challenges, right? Yeah. My attitude is always, let's do our best, right? Because if we, cause if we do that, we'll probably fuck it up anyway, right? Because we're stupid, right? We don't go into these live action challenges saying, let's make a fucking mess of this, right? We go, we go into it like... I'm uh, well. I am anyway. I'm always like yeah. I want to try and do as good as I can here, and then if it turns out shit, well, that's good. That's just inevitable. But yeah. at least I wasn't. Tr- did, yeah, at least they didn't even fucking give it a go. Yeah. Do you think people on this show? Do you, do, you, do you think they are trying their best, or do you think they are just literally? I think they are because I think you know if 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 the outcome of the show is an investment into a business that they want to start up. That's a who pretty big opportunity, right? Who has like, ever fucking gone on to, like, be successful? I don't know. I, but, I mean, they, they, they have recaps every once in a while where, like, you know, these people are... Uh, uh, they look like they're on board, but who you, you never can tell. I don't know. Like, some of them probably go on to do, like, nothing. I mean, they're given, like, such a big fucking opportunity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a quarter of a million that they get potentially invested in. Uh, but pff, whether it happens or not, I have no idea. Maybe it does. And a lot of the people on it are already usually people who own businesses, right? Yeah, already. and are fairly fairly successful. Well, they, they range. Chicago- Some of them aren't, though. Some of them are just like, you know, accountants, communication managers and stuff like that. But they, they feel they're entrepreneurial enough or they have a good business case that they think is going to... But the business cases are always <laughs> pretty terrible as well. So I don't know, like... But again, I'm not I'm not an expert. So like I'm watching this and like I feel like, you know, if I was on there, I would I'd clean up and I probably wouldn't. Like I would probably get kicked out in the first week or whatever, but uh pff, I don't know. It's it's just crazy. It it's Would just, you go on it? It's crazy. No, you know what? I don't think I would. I like I don't think I'd ever go like on Big Brother either. Oh my god, that would be the worst. What if you had like a moment of madness where you picked your nose and ate it and you forgot that you were uh, on TV? I would never do such a thing. What if you were really bored and you're just like, oh fuck, I wonder what this tastes like. No, now that I'm an adult. I, would, I, I used disgusting. to eat this stuff all the time when I was a kid. I did. Now that I'm bigger, oh, it's just maybe the most I just want to have a little thing. taste. Ugh, please stop. <laughs> So gross. I honestly, I, I feel sick when people do that or, or I see it or, or talk about it. Oh, Please stop. I don't want to be on, on, on a TV show like that because I think I think you just end up looking so it, you just end up looking so bad. And like maybe you're not that bad in real life at all. You know, maybe maybe you are a very competent person, but these shows definitely make you look totally incompetent right like it, like you said the editing and everything and 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 the nature of the challenges it's a lot of pressure right they don't have a lot of time to do this stuff you know like people that have never baked a donut before you can't expect them to make nice donuts like or even edible ones like in their first like five minutes you of baking it up, donuts. you donut that's what he wanted he wanted to be able to call them a donut right you yeah. donuts talking of donuts <laughs> I've laid on this bakery for you and I want you to bake me some bloody artisan donuts. You mugs. Uh, but uh, it only... Oh, fuck, it feels like only in London would they have a big market for artisan donuts and gourmet oh, New York. burgers. New and, York and, as well. Yeah. You know, th- this is like one of the most expensive cities in the world to even visit, let alone live in. And and it's just like uh, here. Let's just add another layer of expense. Like you know, if you you want to have, you can have a super nice bread. It's going to cost you, but it's going to be fucking really nice. Like or there's an Oreo cookie uh, attached to the top of the burger because that's kind of zany and stuff. And you know, we could probably charge you five extra pounds right. for that one Oreo cookie to be on top of your burger. I don't know. It seems crazy. Like, but I guess you know, if people buy it and it's and it's popular. They There's a well hundred do it, dollar but... donut you can get in New York. I saw it on, uh, Ma- I think it was Man vs. Food or something like oh, that. Right, okay. And uh, it's got, it's been dipped in gold. <laughs> right, let's do it. Let's do it now. Okay, you're the donut task. What's your fucking, what's your solution to like some artisan bullshit donut? Uh, I honestly, I, I don't fucking know because like a donut is just a donut, right? Like they all kind of taste the same. It doesn't matter what you do to them. Like, I got one for you. Chicken donut. Chicken okay. donut, mate. You're gonna just shred some like fried up chicken, chicken it's like a shredding chicken nugget, but in a donut shape with sugar on it. Yeah. Right. Fucking hell. Yeah, delicious. Mate. You could call it. You could call it a dough nugget. A dough oh, nugget. Oh, yes. That's a perfect. The dough nugget. See. 
it. We're rich. This would be gold. We're rich. Yeah, like, we would be we millionaires. We came up with a killer idea, the Dough Nugget. Oh, quick, what, nobody copy this. Been, like, the, what are the big donut chains now? Krispy Kremes. Oh, and then my there's, God, like, I love Krispy Kreme. Dunkin' Donuts is still going, I'm assuming. In Canada, there's Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons? Tim Hortons. <laughs> Um, but like, you know, shout what I mean? out and to all of you guys. If you want to, what, what do the these places nugget? do that's so special? All the donuts taste the same. Hey, like, and the, you know. hold on a second there, Mr. Man. Krispy Kreme donuts are the best. You get like oh. a honey cruller or like a sour cream glaze. Those are pretty nice. I just, or like, just like the I just like the basic bitch. Donut. Just the old traditional um, chocolate glaze. You get chocolate glaze or vanilla. Oh, I love Krispy vanilla Kreme. glaze. Um, but you know what I mean? There's nothing like, you get the ones with filling, like, you know, like with the chocolate filling and sometimes they have like, uh, you know, like chocolate icing on top with like a, a bit of white icing, mm. like zigzagged mm. on top mm. or whatever mm. to make mm. it look nicer. But like, where, where else can you go with donuts? I feel like that's it. That's like, no, no, sir. There's apart from options. just putting weird shit on top of it, yeah. like a full cookie right. or like sprinkling flakes of whatever on top or whatever like i guess that makes it look a bit different no no maybe no, 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 better no. but i mean the actual cost of ingredients isn't much higher is it it's just like a couple of sprinkles and and a fucking cookie right. out of a i want you to do me a favor a pound for i want you to do me a favor all right i want you to google artisan donuts and look at this shit all right hang on and you second. tell me that these don't fit the bill artisan donuts. of artisan donuts there's one here okay called here's Crosstown a couple of ideas London. let me swing it by okay. you mate all right listen up all right i've got a couple of ideas you're gonna for lay out first uh, of all let me lay on these, them. these look like honestly these look like normal donuts okay? no they really here don't a, here is a chocolate glaze with uh hundreds uh, hundreds and thousands sprinkled look, I've, on all right i've linked it in discord look at this look you at can this get a little tub of hundreds and thousands for like 35p so uh, d uh, that drives up the price of this donut. I'm gonna pay three pounds fifty for a donut with chocolate glazing on it. It looks like a five-year-old applied that chocolate. Yeah, it's crazy, top. right? Like it does look like kids make some of this. Like some of it, it looks impressive. Here at Artisan Fucking Donuts, all of our donuts are put together by five-year-olds. Uh, that's right. That's our gimmick. <laughs> Do you want a five-year-old to decorate your fucking donut? Custom every time. How much is a donut? Ugly worth? face. Okay. Smiley face. Let me Giraffe. How dinosaur. <laughs> anything. How my five-year-old will draw you badly on a donut? Crispy. Want sprinkles? There's too many. Cream. He's put all the packet on. <laughs> cost. Don't worry. Packets of sprinkles only cost us 35p. But this donut... Five pounds! All right, listen. <laughs> so, at, at, at Krispy Kreme Donuts, I can buy one donut for one dollar and twenty nine cents. God, that's expensive. Okay. Right. Okay, but these artisan donuts on the Apprentice yesterday were selling for four pounds each. Okay. I know. Jesus so, Christ. and what's the difference? What are they putting on this that makes it worth that much? Uh, it's like a captive audience. And it's not though. a lot of extra effort either. Realistically, like, you've got the donut with the icing on it, and that's like your, your normal $1.29 donut. And then you put, like, a chocolate-covered pretzel on it. Bearing in mind, you haven't made this chocolate-covered pretzel, okay? This is one of those chocolate-covered pretzels that you just get from, like, You didn't Bulk even Barn make this pretzel! This isn't artisan! Yeah, yeah. What kind of artisan so, are you? So yeah. just putting a chocolate-covered pretzel on top of the donut drives up the price by, like, 300%? That's crazy! Do you want to know why I, this I, is? I think artisan donuts are a I, scam. Uh, dude, I, it's not a scam. I'll tell you what it is, all right? There's a really good book by Tim Harford called The Undercover Economist. I recommend it. And he talks about why when you go into really fucking Starbucks, well. uh, the, the, the menu is coffee yeah. and then super coffee and everything in between. So there are, there are multiple different kinds of customer. One of them is price sensitive. One of them is price insensitive. Those are the two extremes, right? right. Price insensitive customer doesn't give a shit how much he pays or she pays for the coffee. They're going to spunk money on this fucking coffee. The price, they just want the best they thing just, on well, the they, No, they don't even care. They'll just go, give me this, 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 and put this on it and sprinkle these and five of those. The price sensitive they're customer... Careless. They're just... They're just like, oh, well, I'm spending money on a coffee. Right, but know, they're, they're, they're price insensitive. They, they really don't care if it costs five quid for a cup of coffee. They're going to pay the five quid. Then you get me. Cheap flax walks in, give me the cheapest, <laughs> shittest, smallest coffee you do, so I can fulfill the requirement to drink a coffee without spending more money on it than I need to. That's the price-sensitive customer. So if you have right. a menu that just says, 
how much do you want to spend on coffee? That's what the, they desperately want to know, is how much would you spend? So what you really want as a shop owner is for the customer to come in and slap money down and go, I will spend all of this £10 on coffee. How much is your coffee? And you can say £10. And they'll say, perfect, and give you the tenner. That's what the, the shop's <laughs> ideal scenario. Of course, what actually right. happens is you walk in and go, how much is your coffee? So rather than say, uh, and try to gauge how much you can gouge this person for, you just say, well, look at our menu. We have everything from a 60p cup of shit coffee. We have shit wag dog shit coffee for two pounds right. or fancy Ecuadorian thing ground on the, ch the thighs of virgin children for 9 99 I'm a non-virgin child. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, I could name a few, unfortunately. God, God. damn. So... Yeah, that that's it. That that's why they have this shit. These artisan donuts. Your your price sensitive goomba like me isn't gonna fucking spend five pound on a donut, but some price insensitive goomba, right goomba will. That's the, the yeah. There you go. So that's what it boils down to. Yeah. Some people just don't care about how much money they're spending on a donut, yeah. and then other people do care about how much money they're yeah. spending. Yeah, and they on go to Krispy Kreme and spend a buck, and the guys that spend five pound go. And to I guess it makes sense whatever. because, like I was saying, it's not a lot of extra overhead had to uh, to pass into the artisan um area of donutery right because all you're right. doing is putting on some you know some extra sprinkles or whatever that probably cost you nothing exactly uh, well, but then you can and, tr and, then and, you can inflate the price and right because starbucks and wants to charge these... you 30 or 40p for a bit of whipped cream even though that whipped cream costs them less than a penny to put on so they make a lot more money from those people that say, I'd like the mocha choke tika pluka plaka latte, please, with pumpkin spice, and I want the cream, and I want the chocolate sprinkles, and I want the powder, and I want this, and I want that. And it's all costing pennies, but they're charging pounds. That's that's the big margin, is the... Uh, it's those it's people. changed, though. It used to be that street food was this shitty, cheap, sausagey wank that you would just not right. want okay you'd avoid it right it would be crap but now it's all artisan like, it is food look at is, the bristol is, uh, is, food market it's weird we all the yeah, shops yeah. all the shops are corporations mass producing garbage and the food trucks are artisan places which one grandma right you know makes oh my despite sandwiches good <laughs> head <laughs> food that i grew I'm in content. my greenhouse and, uh, i've only got one tomato left and it cost you nine pounds i mean one of those street <laughs> well, food places does tartiflette it's like street tartiflet, really? Like I was, I, I was know, surprised. You can get fucking crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. It's, it's really good. But yeah, you're right. But uh, then you you've got these middle class people that have money, and they kind of want to go to Burger King sometimes and McDonald's occasionally and Domino's and stuff from time to time. But if you're going yeah. into your office, you don't want to walk in with a fucking McDonald's bag. You feel like such a scrub. You want to go to the fancy food market and say, oh, really I bought though? some, like, some Mongolian it. lentils today uh, sprinkled with <laughs> oh, donuts. Oh my god. It only cost me eight there's pounds. No hope. There is no hope for humanity, is there? Like, No, we're, there's we're a lot doomed. of hope for us. We're, we're, we're Come fantastic. On. We're, yeah. They're not. We Mongolian are. lentils sealed the deal. We're, we're done. <laughs> yeah. We're over. Okay, we're great. But I've got an idea. Here's my idea for donuts, right? How about this? A donut that is based. It's called it's called the, the, the croggy. The cro oh, oh, don't right. bring like up a, the croggy. A, a, right. a bike it's wheel. It's like a right? handlebar. <laughs> You've got to jam uh, your foot in this uh, machine, <laughs> and then I'll shove an avocado up your ass. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top. So what's just Adam, Alan Sugar think of that? Adam Sugar. Adam Sugar. Adam, think. Adam. My brother Alan's a big deal. They call him a lord. But <laughs> down here at Adam Sugar Industries, we make donuts. Nice and simple. Sweet. Square donuts. Oh no, square donuts. What have I done? Oh, I'm ruined. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on. The Apprentice in the US was was just Trump, right? There yeah. wasn't another. Um, there wasn't another. I mean, like... Look how successful he went on to be. Oh, fucking Alan Sugar still slaving away at the fucking. I don't know, man. <laughs> he does okay. Like he's he's, he's, all right. he's done well for himself, hasn't he? That 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 Trump. <laughs> That thought he's really done well <laughs> after that TV show. He wasn't rich before it's then, like was he? an episode of Gogglebox. He, fucking, he like... fucking was rich as fuck before he went on The Apprentice, you goon. Well, <laughs> so allegedly. I th I, yeah, I he's think not he as rich lied as he lot. says. But he inherited no. a lot, but yeah, he inflated. <laughs> no, it's just a small loan. Just a small loan to get him started off. Just a small loan of ten billion dollars. Anyway, let's let's end the podcast. Thanks everyone for fucking for watching this gar listening to this garbage, I guess. <laughs> listening um, to this garbage, yeah. I mean there's 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 probably like uh far um 
technically better podcasts out there, but you know what? This one fucking owns, right? Like, it's the best. Like, where else can you find three miserable people arguing about the price of donuts? Exactly. Answer that one, guys. Well, I, it's, 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 thanks, everyone. We're going. Bye. <laughs> bye. See you later. Bye.